Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make the Sierpinski Triangle. So what is a Sierpinski Triangle? A Sierpinski Triangle is a fractal shape, which is a pattern that is self-similar across different scales, meaning that however much you zoom in, you'll see the same pattern over and over again. And the Sierpinski Triangle can be constructed in many ways, and I've done a video using the method called the Chaos Game, which you can check out, but in today's video, we're going to be using recursion. To create the Sierpinski Triangle, we're going to start with a big triangle. And then we're going to cut it into four smaller triangles, each with a size that is one fourth of the size of the big triangle. And then we're going to remove the middle one. And then we're going to repeat this step over and over again inside the smaller triangles. Why don't we start by drawing a big triangle? And we can do that using a built-in function called triangle, which takes in a total of six arguments, the x and y coordinates of the three points that makes up the shape of a triangle. So first, I'm actually going to declare the three points as vectors. And vector is a P5 object that can hold two values, which I'm going to use to hold x and y coordinates. So why don't we call it P1? And then I can use a function called create vector, a method inside the vector class. And we're going to provide in the points that we want to create this. So I want it to be at width divided by 2 and 0 for the first point. For the second point, I'm going to have it at height, no, 0, comma height. So it's going to be at the very bottom left of the canvas. And then the last point is going to be width, comma height. And then now I'm going to use a function called triangle, and then we're going to put in x and y coordinates of these three points. So p1.x, p1.y, p2.x, p2.y, p3.x, and p3.y. So this is the first level of the Sierpinski triangle. The second level is that we need to be able to draw three triangles that are going to be at the very top here, at the bottom right here, and then at the bottom left here. And to do that, we need three additional points. And these three points are going to be halfway between each of the sides here. And we're going to do that by creating additional vectors using a method called LERP. Let's look at the reference page. The LERP method calculates new x, y, and z components that are proportionally the same distance between two vectors. The AMT parameter is the amount to interpolate between the old vector and the new vector. 0 keeps all components equal to the old vector. 0 0.5 is halfway between. So this is actually what we want. And 1 sets all components equal to the new vectors. So if you have seen my videos on linear interpolation, specifically with the function lerp, this is very similar. But this lerp method is inside the vector class, so we can use it on vector objects directly. And the way that we're going to be doing it is using this static version of lerp, as in p5.vector.lerp, and we're going to provide two vectors and the amount, and it's going to return a new p5 vector object. We're going to create three new vectors, right, that are going to be halfway between each of the sides here. I actually want to draw an ellipse at all these points first because I want to see which points are which points. So let's do first one red, second one blue, then third one green. We need to change this to 2, this to 3, 2, 3, oops, um, and then this one to white. Okay, so this is point 1, this is point 2, and this is point 3. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to create three vectors, right? So we want it to be between, how about between one and two here? So let's call it P12, and it's going to be P5.vector.lerp, right? We want to interpolate between 
two points, so between P1 and P2 at 0 0.5. And now if I draw ellipse at P12.x, P12.y, RGB. Oh, I did that wrong. So that was one, this is two, and this was three. All right. And so we need to do the same thing for all sides. So P13 will be P5 dot vector dot lerp. P13 at 0 0.5. Same thing for the last one at 23. P5 dot vector dot lerp at P2 and P3 at 0 0.5. Okay, and then now we just need to draw triangles. So let's do the first one which is going to be, how about we do the top one first? So between this point, which is P1, and then this point, which is this point, right? 1, 2, and 1, 2. And then this point will be 1, 3, and 1, 3. All right. And then second one will be, how about this left one here, which is between 1, 2, and 1, 2. This one should be 2, 3 and two, three. And then this point here is P2 and P2. Okay, and then the last one will be this point here, which is one, three, and one, three. And then this point is P3 and P3. And this point is P2, three, and P2, three. Now we can write a recursive function. So. What is a recursive function? First, a recursive function needs to call on itself. So why don't we start with calling this Sierpinski? Yeah, let's just call it Sierpinski. So the base condition is the condition that we will get out of the recursive function. And that is when, if level is equals to zero, we just want to draw this big triangle here. All right, else we want to actually call all of this, right? But basically these triangle functions are what? They're basically just us calling the Sierpinski function over and over again. So we can just call the recursive function. So Sierpinski, and what is the parameters that we should put in here? We need to provide three points, right? That will make up the triangle. So it's going to be P1, P2 and P3, and we're going to set these points inside here. And then we need to basically call the Sierpinski function three times, right? At what point? P1, P12, P13, P1, P12, P13. And then the second one will be at P12, P23, and P22, P2. P12, P23, and then P2. And then the last one is at P13, P3, and P23. Then the last step of a recursive function that we need to not forget is that it needs to work towards the base condition. So we're going to provide one more argument called level. And basically, we're going to subtract the level every time we call the Sierpinski function inside here so that eventually it will come such that level becomes zero. All right, so now inside here, inside the draw function, we just need to call Sierpinski function, right? And we're going to provide P1, P2, and P3, and then level. And then how about we set the level to zero, just to test it first. That works, still okay. How about one? Ta-da! Let's try two, three, 10. And there you go. Now we have a Sierpinski triangle using a recursive function. 
Before I end this video, I want to share with you a cool fact about the Sierpinski Triangle. Did you know that as the level increases to infinity, the area of this shape goes to zero? Think about that for a second. How is that even possible? An area of a shape goes to zero. And on the other hand, the perimeter of this shape goes to infinity. If you look at this here, at level equals to zero, let's say that the area equals to one, the next level up, level equals to one, the area of the three triangles are three quarters of the size of the area of the previous level. And the same goes for the area of the other level. The area of each level is three quarters of the area of the triangles in the previous level. And as we do this an infinite number of times, as n goes to infinity, the area becomes zero. And the same logic goes for the perimeter. As we increase the level to infinity, the perimeter actually goes to infinity. And this is one of the characteristics of fractal shapes. I hope that you enjoyed this video and my series on recursion and fractals. And give this one a try.